Okay. All right. Well, uh, my name is Danielle Driscoll. I'm the Assistant Director of Alumni and Constituent Relations here at PSU. Uh, I just want to thank everyone for joining us tonight. Um, it's nice to see some familiar faces and, and maybe a few people I haven't met yet. So, um, like I said, thanks for taking some time out of your evening to visit with us. You know, we typically are traveling, we're visiting alumni in the four state area. And, you know, we've had our moments where we've kind of traveled out of that area. Two years ago, we took a big trip to the West Coast last summer, or last, I guess last February at this time, we were in Texas. Um, so of course, COVID has definitely changed our jobs a lot. Um, so of course, like everyone else, we've adapted to these virtual events on Zoom and you know, we found that they've been very successful. We've been able to connect with people that we can't typically connect with in person because we can't travel to New York or even, you know, Africa, um, the Bahamas. We've had a pretty good variety of people on from all over. So um, this is definitely a good opportunity for us. And we're, we're glad that you're all here with us tonight. So we'll just get started with our virtual guerrilla gathering for technology and workforce development. I'll go ahead and introduce our guest tonight. So we have Dr. Andy Klinke. He's professor of technology and engineering education and the interim chair for technology and workforce learning. We have a lot of long, long titles here. So uh, Byron McKay, coordinating professor for technology and engineering education and Charlie Phillips, Coordinating Professor for Architectural Manufacturing Management and Technology. Did I get those all right? Uh, yeah, sort okay. Of. <laughs> here in a minute, though. <laughs> okay, okay, perfect. Um, so we might just go ahead and have you all introduce yourselves. Um, I'm sure you're all familiar with each other, but maybe this will just give us an opportunity to uh, reconnect. So if you want to, you know, give us your name, your graduation year, maybe your degrees you had, and where you are now. Um, and yeah, Joseph, I'm going to turn it over to you first. Hi, everyone. Uh, Joseph Polipek graduated in 2018 with a Bachelor of Science in Technology and Engineering Education. I am a fifth through eighth grade computer applications teacher on the west side of Wichita, a little small school, St. Mark's. Um, I teach about 135 kiddos this year. Thank you. Uh, David? Hi, uh, I'm a graduate of 2015 Wood Technology, which is now the architectural manufacturing and I, I already screwed it up. Anyways, <laughs> uh, I work for uh, USA Millwork um, remotely out of uh, my house in Arizona. And um, yeah, okay. in Thanks. IT. Yeah. Awesome, okay, Matthew? Uh, Matthew Keller. I graduated in 02 from the automotive department, but then got my master's in technical education in 03. So, uh, living in Bueller, Kansas, and work for Agco Corporation in Hessen. Okay, great. Kelson? Uh, I graduated uh, last spring from AMMT, and I'm a graduate assistant here in the program still. Thanks. Dale? Um, I graduated in... Uh, 82 uh, from the technology department uh, with an emphasis in uh, printing, graphic arts, uh, currently on the board of the advisory council for the GIT department. Great. Thanks for being here. Katie, do you want to give a rundown? <laughs> Let me like introduce myself. Um, I'm Katie George. I'm the director of development for the College of Technology here at Pittsburgh State. Um, I'm a 2015 graduate from graphics also, actually, so it's nice to see some familiar faces. Yeah, yeah. so, um, you know, since, since I think we have a manageable group tonight, I think if everyone's okay with it, if you have a question, if you just want to uh, raise your hand, then we can call on you, and if you would prefer to ask your questions in the chat, then that's also fine, and um, we can answer them kind of in the moment or we can come back and, and respond to those when um, our speakers have the opportunity. Um, I do encourage everyone to mute themselves just so we aren't picking up any background noise or getting any feedback. Um, but I'll go ahead and hand it over to Andy. Okay, um, I'm gonna get some out of the way. I uh, lost a tooth over break, so if I smile and I'm missing a tooth, I'm, I hate to say it, but my wife accused me of being from Arkansas 
which I don't know why they got called out. But anyway, uh, I am the other tooth, but I'm, I'm not putting it in because I feel like I cannot speak with it. I have a hard enough time without it. So I'll start with that. Uh, technology and workforce learning, I, I know several of you out there just from seeing you in the hallways and in the programs and currently in the programs, like Katie's in the program right now, and uh, I'm trying to get Joseph back in here, but uh, I've had Matt in class, so I've seen several of you. <clears throat> and for technology and workforce learning, I, I can't tell you how excited I am. We are the only department that is positive in numbers uh, this semester, and uh, we were basically positive for most of the past uh, six semesters. So you look from spring to spring and fall to fall, we're pretty much, the only time we had a downside was in winter fall when uh, last last winter fall when we had the COVID hit. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty ecstatic. There are some programs down, I'll talk about those in a minute, but overall we're up and that is a positive <clears throat> compared to some of the other programs. I could put it up on the screen. It's, it's pretty ugly uh, on some of them, so I'm not going to do that, but uh, in comparison, we're up about 1.62% or about 2% uh, compared to uh, the College of Technology. We're down about 7.5%. In the university, we're probably pretty close to that. So overall, I feel really good about technology and workforce learning. And I'll be upfront, I can't take any of the credit for it. It's people like Charlie and Byron. And I don't know where Jordan went to. He was there a second ago. But uh, the faculty, we have really strong faculty. and and we work as a group. If I called out individual programs, we have some that are down, uh, we have some that are up, but overall we're up. So I like the fact that we work as a team because if you're down one semester and you start telling how good you are or how bad you are, you could be up next semester, right? So we don't do that. We just support everybody. So uh, we're going to, to move forward and, and try to build the programs and build the department as a whole. So that's kind of where we're at with with enrollment. So I usually have a personal goal. I don't even know if I tell the faculty this, but I, I want sustained growth about three to five percent per year. I think that's sustainable growth. We were a little shy uh, this last or this this semester, but over the past three years, we're right at three percent. So I'm pretty happy with that. And I'm not going to get into too many specifics on who's up and down, but I'll say that our Master of Science and Technology is our largest program. We have 99 majors in that. Uh, we have one faculty, uh, Dr. Gores, and then we borrow from other uh, departments to help teach the classes we need. Uh, but that is a very large department. I'm, I just got approved for a, a full-time non-tenure earning position for that. So I'll start putting that out this coming week. Uh, it's going to be hard to find somebody when it's non-tenure earning, but we're going to try. We need to have somebody in there to help with those 99 majors. And there's about 65 international majors, and there's about 35 domestic majors in that. So that's a really hard uh, group to teach, the internationals. Uh, we're glad they're here, but it is it makes it more difficult. So we need to have help in that area. Uh, Another area that's pretty, uh, is growing quite a bit, uh, is uh, workforce development and human resource development. And so that's our online programs. They're fully online. And I think that's why it's growing. We've done some things like uh, putting in a, we're putting in a military appreciation program to try to pull in some military uh, people that are active duty, uh, try to get them into the human resource development program. And then uh, we've also made it to where our workforce development program will accept any associate's degree. And for those who don't understand, that's huge. So we don't have to worry if they have an, an AA degree, an associate of arts, an associate of science, applied science. We're going to take them as a whole. We're going to take that whole degree and then they're going to finish with 60 hours. So they have to come from an approved program, uh, an approved uh, accredited program. And once we have that, they can come in and finish 60 hours. So that's, I have a feeling that's going to be the next big blow up for us. Because those people that have, especially the applied science degrees, the Associate of Applied Science, those people have a hard time getting into the collegiate level because they don't have the general eds. We're gonna wipe that out and we're gonna say, we're taking, we're gonna take you as you are. So I think that's gonna be a really positive. 
those people are working anyway. They're now they're looking to advance their degrees and move up into management. So this will give them the opportunity to do that. So we're really really happy about that. Another one that's growing is uh, is the uh, you know, center. Or I want to say it's Center for Current Tech Ed, but uh, Current Technical Education is growing. And I'm going to have Byron talk a little bit more about that here in just a minute. But uh, our numbers are going up in that mainly because they've gone all online for the CTE, uh, for technical teacher education. And that has opened up the doors across the United States now. So now they're online. Uh, we have a major from Oregon. Uh, we have some from, um, of course, Missouri, from Texas. What was the other one? Tennessee was one of them. So we're starting to spread that out. So I think that's going to take off as well. So again, sustained growth on that would be really, really nice. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Byron talk about how we're changing the the Bachelor of Science in Current Technical Education here in just a minute. I'll take his thunder, let him talk for a little bit, um, and then uh, I'm gonna let them talk specifically about architectural manufacturing and technology and engineering education this semester. We're down a little bit there, but they're typically programs that see an increase in the fall. I don't know, that's just where we see that increase. So I'll let them speak specifically to those areas. Uh, some of the things that have happened where we've changed over to PIT pathways and that's the old general, or the old general ed is now changed and that's changed dramatically. That allowed many, or not many, several of the, uh, the architectural manufacturing majors to graduate a semester early. So that inflated our numbers for this semester. So. It kind of hurt us and it really helped the students. So really, really happy with how the pathways has helped our majors uh, either get minors, emphases, or potentially graduate sooner. So really happy with that. So that's kind of what we have in, in the department. Uh, this is my third year here as the department chair. I've enjoyed it. Uh, the last couple of semesters have been a little rougher. I'm not this kind of person, I'd rather have you come into the office or sit down in a in a meeting and talk. Uh, so this is not my forte, but uh, a lot of learning. And at that, you know, everybody's made adjustments. I'm sure everyone, Joseph and, and Dave, you said you're working from home. Matt, I don't know if you are or not, uh, Dale, but uh, I know that everybody has been impacted by this. I am just so glad that we are in person here. I think that has helped a lot on our numbers as far as, I mean, I think it could be worse for other departments. For us, we're doing pretty good, but uh, I think it could have been a lot worse uh, for the university. So in a way we're down, but I'm thankful because it could have been a lot worse. And I really appreciate uh, Jordan and, and Charlie and Byron for stepping up and, and teaching in the classes. I mean, it's, it, it can be pretty hard. And when we had to switch and rotate over to online, for those that have been through our programs, graphics and and woods and, and tech ed, those are hands-on classes and it's just really hard to teach those uh, in a virtual format. So I'm glad we're back and I'm glad that our faculty made that adjustment last term, but I'm glad we're back and they're back in the classroom. So, so Daniel, I'll turn it back over to you. I don't know if I'm supposed to switch it over to them or turn it back to you and let you do it. You're the host. Yeah, Byron, if, if you're up next, take it away. Thanks, Andy. I will second that I am so glad to be back as I taught a CNC course last, um, last spring and trying to teach that from home was, um, well, awful, as you can imagine. Um, so I'm glad we, I'm also glad we're back. So um, Dr. Klinke mentioned um, the changes in CTE. So um, the current um, technical teacher education is called a, a Bachelor of Science in Career and Technical Education with an emphasis in public, public sector teaching. Um, and then right now the tech ed is Bachelor of Science in Technology Engineering Education. Um, we're gonna start combining forces um, really. We, we, don't, we, we have a different population we serve anyway, but we're really gonna be very, um, I think we'll be more effective working together so we are going to combine into a Bachelor of Science in Korean Tech Ed. And so now ours will be an emphasis in technology and engineering education, and theirs will be an emphasis in technical teacher education. 
theirs will be serving those um, out wanting to come get their certification. They've come out of industry. Now they're using their tested experience of work to go and uh, teach in their, their, in their um, area of professionalism. Um, if they work construction, now they're going to teach construction and so on. Um, whereas now we're still going to be working on licensure and taking care of um, the holistic tech ed teacher. I, I'm really excited about it. There's a trend on campus that rather than having a bachelor in science, bachelor of science and education degree, like for instance, math, there's no longer a bachelor of science education with a major in math it is now a bachelor of science with an emphasis in math education. Uh, that's, that has happened to almost every, actually I think it has happened now to every um, education department. Uh, I think we were the last holdout on that, but we decided that this was, we, I really believe that this is going to be a, a good push for us to um, really work together and uh, create a lot of new things as now. Whereas uh, just for instance, today, uh, Greg Belcher and I, we were, we were comparing notes on these we had been getting um, inquiries into the programs and we were making sure we each had the right people. And not that we ever had any problem with that anyway, but now it's now it's it's our program. So whoever these students go to, it's it, we're together, and it's been very very good for us. Uh, I want to say one more one more thing on that, Byron. Is the the reason that people have done this across campus is for minima issues. That is the primary reason for switching. So uh, mathematics had very few majors, but they had more math ed majors. So when they combine those, they reduce that minimum issue. We had to have so many majors graduate each semester over a certain period of time. And so every, it really started with just a few of them that had that issue with or whether the education was low and the, the other uh, degree was, was fuller, they combined them and now there's no more, um, there's, there's no more worries about those minimum issues. And so you'll see things in the paper, and I don't know if you've seen it where they're reducing programs on campus. And some of those were specifically towards this. So yes, it's reducing a program, but we're not reducing any ability to produce those majors. So when you read those things in the paper, kind of be careful of how you interpret those things. Because even though we're, we are reducing a major in education, we're getting rid of all bachelor of science in education, except for the elementary education but we're not losing those majors in our specific technical areas or uh, specific areas like math and science and communications, family and consumer science, stuff like that. They're just switching them under that other degree. So go ahead, sorry, Byron. It's all right, we're, we're trying to increase efficiency. And that, that's one thing that's been going around campuses on that. And I think this is one way to do it. Um, numbers wise, I have, I'm gonna have three, I'm gonna have three student teaching right now. I had four last semester. Um, I'll have, I think I have three or four next semester, depending on if they pass their classes this, um, this spring. Um, and then I already have all those replaced. And so I, I expect to have um, growth in at least a few numbers. I'm I right at 20 right now. I'm really hoping to hopefully be at 25 next semester, um, which I mean, that's percentage wise, that's great growth. I'm very hopeful for it with how that thing's been going. It's been hard to get out, um, but, I'm, I'm going to show you some of the ways I've been doing it. I'm also the state advisor for Kansas TSA, Technology Student Association. Um, that is a that great outreach um, and where I'm trying to brand the gorillas with it and we're, we're with, while still serving them in that capacity. Uh, I would like to share with you one of the things I've produced. Uh, I have a virtual 360 walkthrough. Um, I might even, I'll even share that in chat and you guys can look at it. I'm just going to give you a quick synopsis of a look at it. Um, I'm getting ready to do this for Charlie tomorrow or get started on it. Uh, we're going to work together and get to AMMT1. Then we're going to work towards getting a whole college of technology at some point in time. Um, if, if available, we're going to get that done. I think it'll be a great outreach, a great recruitment tool so that students can just come in and look around. So I'm going to share my screen. I forgot my mouse at home, so this might be awkward trying to walk around the room, but we're going to make it happen. All right, that pop up. All right, Center of Applied STEM Education. Nice little fly in. It's being really slow right now. All right, so I can I'm I can be able to come in here and I, as a student, as a, a potential gorilla, I can look around the classroom. I can see what it looks like. I have places in here where I've 
embedded videos. Okay, this might not work very well because I've clicked twice. I haven't moved yet. There we go. I have a welcome video from myself. It's really easy to embed um, pictures and walkthroughs and curriculum. I'm not going to play it, but I'm going to let you all look, look around at it um, yourselves if you'd like to. Show it to if you have any ones that you think that might want to teach. Uh, this wasn't too terribly difficult to produce, um, but it was, there was a little bit of a learning curve. Uh, graphically, it's fairly easy to see everything. I can zoom in pretty good. Uh, this took me several tries. Uh, keep everything clean. We'll, going back and looking at my videos, making sure that um, I hadn't left something sitting out, then realized it later on. But it's being really slow, so I'm going to stop sharing that. Uh, get back to this. Uh, I, I will put that in the link before I leave. And if anybody you want to uh, show that to any potentials, just want to look around yourself. It's, if you have not been in our new lab, but we've had a it was a, it was a very substantial um, lab renovation over the last couple of years. Or I guess it's been three years now. Is that right, Doctor? Thank you. It's been three. Has it been three years? Um, Feels just like yesterday. I know it's two, two and a half anyway. So okay, yeah. two and a half. Like three. Years. Um, I'm pretty sure I had just started. So time flies. Yeah. Um, but I'm excited about that. I've been sending that out and I've got some good responses and I'm going to keep building it up and I've got some professional presentations going to go over that um, here in the next couple of months. Um, we've also, TechEd also has their new standards, their standards for techno technology and engineering literacy. Um, and they're, if, if you know anything about our standards, a couple of you might, uh, they, they're very similar, but now they're closer to how I feel like the uh, science standards are built gives us some more options. So we're working on developing that into our curriculum. So that's kind of, that's my, my quick spiel. I'll make sure I could, I could probably talk more, but I want Charlie to have a chance to share with us because he's got some great things going on. Thanks, Byron. Uh, uh, we can also include, I'll send a follow-up email tomorrow so we can include the link to the um, virtual tour in that as well. All right, thanks. Um, Charlie, you're up. All right, so uh, Charlie Phillips, the AMMT program, which uh, some of you are familiar with, some of you may not be. So formerly known as Wood Tech. Um, so we changed about three years ago um, to architectural manufacturing management and technology, partly into change uh, or better identify with what our students are going out to. So a couple of grads, David and Ger uh, David and David Geralds and Kelson um, that are uh, here with us. Um, but what our students are graduating, kind of the, the area or emphasis that they're going into, um, we wanted to, I guess, dress up what, um, what, you know, how we branded our program um, to better relate to what, what students are going out into to, you know, make it sound cooler, I guess. But um, so we're starting to see a little change with, with that um, as, uh, um, as we continue to go out and recruit, obviously, um, as Byron alluded to, that it is much more difficult to, to reach out to students and, and make the same connections that we would uh, in a normal year where we're out traveling and, and things like that. Um, but we're still able to do it as we're doing these things here with Zoom. Um, they've become the new norm. Um, and so um, we have been able to make, make some connections with that. Some of the other things that uh, we would normally do as a, as a College of Technology um, as a whole is um, in both the spring and this uh, fall, we host an open house where we invite high school students, uh, middle school students, and then just other students who are interested in the College of Technology to come to our facility. Um, we set up demos uh, as do all the other departments, take kids through their parents, their, their teachers um, to show you know, what we have to offer, what are the opportunities what it's like coming in and uh, being a part of our programs. And so um, I, we give a lot of credit to uh, Dr. John Eiley, who is a former chair of uh, this program, who has really kind of stepped up in his um, semi-retirement and taken over that, that open house um, and then going virtual. Um, just in the last two years, he took it from a, an average of two to 300 um, students at a, kind of its heyday um, and push, push that over 800 students that were touring um, during a uh, um, typical open house. So um, that really helped. And then this last fall, he, he took that event and, and made it virtual. 
Um, I still think that number was around 800. I don't have the exact number around uh, in my uh, in front of me right now, um, but we're looking forward to um, to the same thing that's going to be happening here in a few weeks. Um, we also kind of put a backed it a little bit differently, um, kind of as an encouragement or enticement to our teachers to to get them involved in this. Um, our program we actually kind of started it got the ball rolling, but we started offering some scholarships for um, teachers who have a high number of students. Um, we came out and said, hey, you know, if you have, um, you know, if you're a teacher and you, and you have a, a lot of students that participate um, in our department. Um, as well as manufacturing and um, the School of Construction, um, we're giving scholarships to, uh, in, in honor, I guess, of that high school teacher that can then um, nominate a, a student to receive that that's going to be attending next year. So um, I, I kind of did it as a, um, just something that to be more encouraging than just giving them a certificate or a plaque. And then they took that and it went from a $500 scholarship uh, at three o'clock in the afternoon to by eight o'clock the next morning, we were we had uh, as a college decided to give out ten thousand dollars worth of scholarships, and so that was a uh, a plus. It really shows that we are trying to do you know put something behind um, encouraging our students to come here. Um, you know our program has been uh, as, as uh, Andy Andy talked about. We changed our Gen Ed requirements, and we really saw a big dramatic change in that as we have a, a fair number of students that transfer in from other majors. And with that new pathways, we actually, which was great for the students, we had some students that uh, um, prior to that, um, you know, they, they had quite a few hours that they still needed to take to meet the, the uh, um, requirements of our degree. I actually had one student that was able to take off 40 hours um, towards his degree by changing it with this new uh, pathways, general education requirements. So it was a really a big help to them, but what it did was it sped up the graduation process. So we've actually had a good fall graduation and then we are, we're looking forward to a, a good spring group, but with COVID and, and just the way things are right now, we had a smaller than normal um, freshman class. So our numbers are down a little bit, but we're really excited on some of the things we're doing to, to reach out to our students and, and uh, the high schools. Um, and actually just this week, I'll give Katie a lot of credit because she spent a lot of time working on this, but David, this, this really applies to you is we have uh, um, set up some, some uh, scholarship funds for students coming out of the state of Arizona. And so uh, I got word this week that we've secured uh, $15,000 a year for students coming out of the state of Arizona. So we're doing some things um, that, uh, you know, Financially, we have a high amount of uh, out-of-state students in this program. We're right, we average around 40% out-of-state students. Um, now we've changed a lot of things in the last few years as far as um, the, degree, the Gorilla Edge and the Gorilla Advantage programs that allow students um, in surrounding states to have tuition breaks. And then let's say there's the Midwest Exchange Program. There's several programs that allows students from the kind of surrounding states to have either um, in-state tuition or reduced tuition um, but we still have students coming from out of state that are paying full out of state. And that is always, uh, you know, tuition is always a concern, but when you're a full out of state student, it's an even bigger concern. So we've really done a lot to reach out to, you know, supporting um, companies and, and other individuals, um, and they're willing to help support our students. So we're really excited about that. Um, Arizona has always been, um, you know, David was, was one of two of our first Arizona students to come here. And that was uh, 10 years ago. So, um, you know, we've continued that tradition and every, every year almost we've had students coming from the state of Arizona. And uh, so that's for us, um, Arizona is a, is a big pull and something we, we do put a lot of emphasis in. So we're excited on some of those changes and what we're seeing coming down the line with that. Uh, let's see, what else is, is happening here? Um, I guess that was a lot. Um, Andy, you want to help? Is there is there other stuff that that? Uh, um, I can't hear you. Are, you. are you talking about as far as recruiting or or about the program? Because right now you're doing the the uh, presentations on the companies. You might yeah. want to talk about that. A little well, that's bit. okay. Yeah, that's so. Right now, we actually we just had our first uh, first part of our company day. Um, one thing that. Um, that we do with our program 
is we host uh, an annual company day event where we invite companies to come in um, and recruit our students for both internships and full-time positions as internships are um, required within our degree. Obviously this year being with the restrictions, we went to a more virtual re uh, event, um, but we have opened up um, some face-to-face -face presentations. So we had the first of those this week, um, or actually today we had two companies, one from Chicago and one from Tulsa that came and presented to our students. Um, next week we'll have three more companies doing face-to-face -face presentations and then we'll have uh, an additional one that's gonna be doing a virtual presentation. Um, then the following week we'll actually do a virtual table time and then virtual, fa uh, virtual um, interviews um, for students so that they can uh, um, hopefully secure internships for the upcoming summer and then also for students looking uh, for full-time employment. Our numbers for that company day are probably are, are lower than what we typically have. On an average year, we, we typically have a, between 25 and 30 companies that come um, and that's for an average of about 45 to 50 majors. So um, pretty much two students for every company that uh, um, is coming to our event. Currently, I have nine companies that have signed up, but we expect a few more. But it is, um, we have companies that would rather do a face-to-face -face instead of a virtual event. Um, the demand for um, our grads is still just as high as it ever was. Um, and talking to companies, they're just as busy and, and looking for um, both internships um, and for full-time positions. But obviously, with just the way things are this year, some people are more reluctant to do the virtual um, platform than the face-to-face. -face. So I'm hoping next year we, we get back to a somewhat regular uh, event and we'll be back to that close to 30 number. So. Um, as far as other things that, uh, that, our, that our program is doing, um, as far as recruitment, one of the things that I've taken over this recently is uh, I'm now the uh, um, chair of the uh, Skills US, or Skill Kansas Skills USA Kansas cabinet making competition, and so we've always uh, been involved in that. Um, but uh, the former chair of that retired, and so I stepped into that position. Um, one because I believe in what the skills um, skills competition is doing, and and the uh, the success of that program, but then two, I also want to make sure that the things that we're having those students uh, um, be part of is consistently updated as far as what industry is doing. And so bringing new types of construction in, um, new types of materials so that it's, it's relevant for what industry is currently doing. Um, and so in some things we've seen that kind of getting out kind of off track. And so we're trying to bring that on, on track again um, that is also a virtual contest, so that's something that's going to be a little new this year. Um, in former years, we would um, host an event. Um, it used to be held here at Pitt State. Um, then several years ago, it was moved to Hutchison to the state fairgrounds. Um, but at that, um, at that event, you know, 30 to 40 uh, high school students would come in. They'd actually build a project um, during a half-day contest, and then they were uh, evaluated on, on not only the quality but the uh, accuracy of their, uh, their project. This year, it will be the virtual. Um, they will still be building a project, um, but they'll have to have a proctor or outside uh, third party um, person that will be videotaping it. And then myself and several other judges will be evaluating that and through that process. So um, it'll be interesting to see how that goes. It'll also be interesting to see the participation. Um, I've heard feedback, both positive and negative of, of how this will work. Um, and so that's kind of what we're, that's what we're allowed to do. And so that's what we're going to do. Um, and so we try to use that also as a recruiting tool um, to, to show the possibilities and uh, encourage students to, to pos you know, make this a possible career choice. So, so lots of things going on, even though um, we are, you know, restricted on what we can do. We've been face to face. And, and like Byron said, last spring was very difficult to teach um, students uh, face to face um, you know, our hands-on activities and try to do that virtually. Um, so coming back in the fall, it really the students had a lot of uh, enthusiasm. Today it was very evident Well, we actually had somebody from, from industry come in. Um, the students were, were really um, 
really kind of amped up about talking to somebody besides myself and one of the other instructors that wasn't virtual. So um, I was very happy with uh, how the students, how long they actually stayed and talked to companies um, and, and uh, asking questions and things like that, because they're definitely just like us. We're ready to get out and travel and, and uh, meet with people face to face. And, and hopefully that'll, that'll happen sooner than later. So, so for the rest of you, I guess, questions, um, how many are working? I, obviously, David, you're working virtually, and I do keep up a little bit in touch with you, so I kind of know what you're doing. But for the rest of you, how is all this affecting you and what's going on in, in your current positions? Uh, for me, I'm still working from home probably 80% of the time. We can go into the plant as needed. There's a lot of safety protocols. Um, like most of the time when I go in, uh, I have to go in after all the actual line guys are down, but uh, a lot of it's still from here at home. Hmm. Uh, fun story about me. I was actually going to work from home before the pandemic. So <laughs> I guess if anything, it was good for me in the sense of everybody else had to kind of work from home. So it became more normal. Um, but that being said, all of our facilities are open to some degree. Obviously, we can't make cabinets from home. Um, you know, we have policies in place where a lot of the guys out on the floor have a work buddy. So their buddy, uh, if they need to pick up something really heavy or, or get on a ladder and have somebody help them, they kind of have a partner that they can work on with. Uh, that being said, all of our estimating, a lot of our project management, a lot of our engineering have all transitioned to work from home. Uh, until they need to come back. In some cases, we think that that might not happen. Um, it's definitely opened up, you know, with my company, we have multiple locations. So now our engineers work from home, but they kind of can engineer for any location. So it's kind of forced us uh, to innovate in that direction. But at the end of the day, we still have guys uh, on site and uh, a support staff there to support them. My school district, we started in-person classes, 100% in-person classes on August 26. Yeah, August 26. And my school alone, we've only had to go remote for a week and a half because of staffing oh. issues. Hmm. We had, let's see, uh, five elementary school Paris, uh, third, gr third grade teacher, and three middle school teachers come down with the virus. Thanks, Joseph. Dale, what about you? You're muted. We can't hear you, Dale. <laughs> Okay. There we go. <laughs> no, that's better. Um, early on, uh, mid-summer, we were all working from home, uh, but uh, it slowly transitioned back to uh, having everybody working in, in, in the plant. Uh, a lot of my customers uh, have protocols that uh, are in place that you have to, you know, pass COVID tests before you're even allowed on to the campus, that type of thing. So, uh, but currently everything, it seems is, at least in St. Louis, things are going in the right direction. And uh, so things are starting to open, open back up. Great, thank you. I see Melissa, you joined us. Thanks, thanks for tuning in. Would you like to share kind of your current work situation? Um, we've been on an A-B schedule most of the school year. Uh, we went back to five days a week, actually the week that everyone shut down for the weather. We were in school one day that week. <laughs> and then we came back five days this week. Welcome back. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> And news on Melissa, she, she was just awarded a Teacher of the 
teacher year at her school. And I think it's a student led award, which is chosen by the students. So I think that's pretty awesome. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. It's actually not a student chosen award. It's a, well, it's the teacher's vote. Okay. So, well, then a couple of commerce students lied to me today, then. <laughs> um, that's completely probably accurate. And maybe, and maybe they think they, maybe they think they do get to choose that, but that's what I was told. That's but awesome. Way. Well, we do have a high at a high. I'm not in a high school building, but in the high school building, they do actually have a a teacher vote as well. Okay, maybe that's or what they to also. Or maybe <laughs> this was one. This was a re, this was a recent graduate, so maybe he was just thinking the high school and didn't know about the middle school. <laughs> oh this yes, I know cool. who you're talking about. <clears throat> All right. Charlie, you have, have anything else you'd like to share? Do you, does anybody have any questions of us? Anything you'd like to know or anything like that? <clears throat> well, I'll, I'll just kind of reemphasize what Charlie said. It, it's not, you know, our numbers might be down in, in a couple of areas, but it's not that we're not trying to do things. I mean, we're we're going out with the, the walkthrough and the virtual tours. And uh, we have a lot of people actually coming in for on-campus tours as well. Uh, but, uh, it, you know, giving out scholarships. And, I mean, we're trying to do as much as we possibly can uh, with different programs within the department. Uh, but, again, I, I just give all the credit to the, to the faculty. They're the ones, even though the numbers might, might not reflect it, uh, they are putting in the, the time and effort to to try to get students here. Uh, you know, it, it just still just baffles me that we have the only architectural manufacturing four-year program in the country and our numbers, though, I just, I just, I can't wrap my mind around it for, for whatever reason. It's, and it's not that Charlie and Jordan Vern are trying. It's just, it, for some reason, they start picking it up, whether it's the, the high school teachers or parents or whatever say you don't want to work with wood or whatever. I don't know what it is. Same thing with teaching. Uh, Byron's doing as much as he can, but it's just it's just incredibly uh, baffling why we can't get majors here for for the programs. It's just we have awesome facilities, we have awesome faculty, awesome graduates. Throw my uh, shout out to all the people who graduated our programs, and uh, it's just it. I just don't I don't understand it, but. We're doing everything we can. I, I hope you're telling people that you that you meet that we are working towards that. We are trying to get our numbers up, and and we we as a department we're up, but there are certain things you know the programs you guys graduated from are down a little bit, and we need your help as well. So if you can help us in any way, we certainly appreciate it. So I'm I'm up for questions. I, I want some hard balls, not none of those softball things. Yes, is there anything specifically other than trying to spread the word that as alumni we could help, or is there a certain message that you're trying to change or do um, that we could help with, I guess? Well, yeah, I, I do think things that will help. Right now it's really difficult. Uh, normally I'd ask, man, that's a good question. Normally I'd ask alumni to get out to the schools and, and promote at least at minimum the, the program you graduated from. Uh, at most, the College of Technology or even the university. I, don't, I wouldn't even stop at the college because uh, we have a lot of good programs. And it goes from nursing to pre-med to biology to business. You, you just spread it out and we, we do a lot of great things on campus. So as an alumni, if we ever get back to quasi-normal, that ever happens, uh, getting out and uh, because you're, you're familiar with your area, uh, you can get in with your business uh, relations. Hopefully you're contacting the schools and being involved with them through your business, uh, through advisory councils, or, or just going in and giving a presentation. Call them up and say, hey, I'd like to present on what we're doing. And then while you're there, throw a pitch uh, and, uh, and at least talk about Pitt State. Because there's, you get outside of our immediate area here, and there are students that have never heard of Pittsburgh State within the state of Kansas. You know, you get a couple hours away and they're like, Pittsburgh, where's that? Which, again, for us that are here, it's like, how can that happen? But, uh, you know, if you're not KU K State, they may not know who we are. So as an alumni of the, the programs you graduated from, it would be 
great if you could contact the teachers and just say, hey, I'd like to present on what our company's doing. And at the same time, we'd like to present on, on uh, Pittsburgh State. And we have resources like what Byron showed you. You can go in and pull it up and say, this is something that you as a teacher can, uh, can do. And then you can connect those teachers with us and then we can, we can do that. And as you talk to parents or people who work in your company, all it takes is a simple conversation and you can change somebody's career or their, their life forever. So that would be my recommendation. And thank you, Matt, for bringing that up. I have an education question. Okay, go ahead, Melissa, I'm ready. How willing are you guys to work like non-traditionally with someone who wanted to transfer in? Like no. say I might have a para who works with me who would blow a certain commerce <clears throat> student you have right now out of the water, but she cannot quit her job. I, I think we have some options for that, just for the simple fact that uh, CT, now that we're working more closely with um, the technical teacher ed, all of their courses are online. So we can do some things with, uh, with that program as well as uh, do some things within ours that we could work with them. Um, so yeah, I'd, right now we're willing to work with, with anybody and that's not, to, uh, that's not a, because of that, but we're just willing, I've worked with students all the time and you know that. I'll, I'll try to bend over backwards. So. Well, she's she's in my room one hour a day, so she's with me. So she's already getting exposure to, you know, my. Well, she came from our class anyways, but um, at the, the teacher side of it, because she's she's has three students and she has to work with them in my class, as well as other classes, and she's got, you know, some of quite. A, some of her basics done, but she just, she can't not have her pair a job. Right. No, I, I think we can work with him. I, Byron, he's raising his hand. He's ready to work with it. Um, so I have one in that situation right now um, from Frontenac, and we're, 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 we're working pretty close. She's going to be able to take a semester off and then and do a few things. But um, one thing she's doing is some of these classes, I'm, I'm transferring out to online, but she's also working there at the school with um, Eric and Keith on the, some of the hands-on application that she just, she receives the equipment and she's already there. Um, so it, it's something I think we can definitely um, work with. Okay, great. Cause, cause she could essentially do some of that with me as well, because she could come back in after school if she needed to. And, you know, we could work through it. Yep. Cool. I will send her your information. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, it's all you, Danielle. <laughs> all right. I well, know why they're here, they want the presents. <laughs> That's right, that's why everyone tunes in, right? Prizes. Uh, uh, okay, well, thanks Andy and Byron and Charlie. We, we appreciate you guys taking some time to visit with us tonight and kind of keeping everyone in tune with what's going on in, in your area. Um, so, you know, kind of like Andy said, typically I talk about that a little bit, um, you know, our alumni as kind of recruiters, you know, like he said, you guys have had great experiences here at PSU, you're tuned in here tonight, so obviously you have an affinity to PSU and to your department, so yes, please spread the word, even if it's maybe not to students or maybe not in the classroom, if it's your neighbor kid or your niece or nephew or, um, you know, a granddaughter, who, whoever that may be, um, you know, and if you need to get in touch with someone, you can always reach out to the alumni office and we'll put you in touch with who needs, you know, to talk to who and what tour they need to go on. And we'll roll out the red carpet for them when they, when they come. Cause we, you know, more gorillas is always better, right? <laughs> and um, one other thing I just kind of want to mention, we, um, we in the alumni office, we do have a license plate program that um, is available in Kansas, Missouri and Oklahoma. And um, those license plates actually support scholarship dollars. Uh, does anyone have one on their vehicle by chance? Okay, I oh, you, three, okay, great, awesome. So maybe I don't really need to talk about this so much, but, um, but anyway, that's something to always keep in mind. And um, it does go into a scholarship fund. And of course it looks great on your car and it's good PR for wherever you're living and you're out and about driving. Um, 
So just something to always think about. It makes a great gift as well. So, um, and one other thing on Monday, we kind of have a big day here at PSU. Um, it's Apple Day, which of course will look a little different than years past. We're not having an in-person ceremony. Um, but instead, we'll be kind of rolling out some things um, on and off all week, um, kind of acknowledging some of our award not uh, award recipients. We'll have the Good Apple, Distinguished Service Award, um, Golden Gorilla, and a few other things among that. So be, be on the lookout for that. And it's also Gorilla Giving Day. You may um, recall in the past, we've had some challenges where, um, you know, so many donations are met and maybe someone will do something kind of silly. Um, like Doug Younger, I know, and GIT in the past has shaved his shaved his beard, his mustache, maybe both both of that. Uh, my boss John Bartlow shaved his head, um, which was pretty pretty entertaining too. So we raised money for our scholarship, of course. Um, so it'll look a little different this year, but um, you will get an email if you haven't already got a few. So be on the lookout for that. Just some information and. Um, Monday, we're also going to do a social media challenge where we'll be giving away some prizes. So um, if you're on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, be on the lookout for that as well. Uh, does anyone have any other questions, um, you know, Pitt State general or maybe something in the alumni office? No? All right. Well, we'll go ahead and do some prizes then. Okay. So first up, we have this coaster set with the um, Champions Plaza Gorilla on it. And these are going to go to Joseph. <laughs> and let's see here. Okay, next up we have this red cup. And this will go to Matthew. <laughs> and we'll ha we have, um, so once a gorilla, always a gorilla koozie. And this will go to Kelson. And let's see, we have these uh, cute little pit state cutting boards with a split face. This will go to Melissa. And then I drew David for the license plate frame, but he had a hop off. So I'll, I'll just have to share that with him tomorrow. But it's kind of snazzy, so it's alumni on it. And last but not least, we have this split face uh, blanket, throw blanket, and that will go to Dale. Thank you. Yeah, of course. I so we rigged. will. That's rigged. I didn't get anything. <laughs> well, we can send you a little something if you want. <laughs> um, so we'll get all this packaged up and in the mail to you, maybe tomorrow, maybe Monday. But um, either way, you'll, you'll get them in the mail here in a few days. So be on the lookout from a package from Pittsburgh State. Um, if no one else has any questions or anything, um, I guess. I guess we'll just wrap it up. Any any last remarks from anyone? I do. I'd, I'd like to thank everybody for coming. This is really pretty cool. I don't get to see a lot of faces, especially ones I know. So I like I, I do like it. I'd rather see you here, but mm -hmm. I do like to see everybody and talk to everybody. So thanks for coming. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks again, Andy and Charlie, for tuning in. And, and Byron looks like he had a hop off. So um, yeah, thanks everyone for joining us. It was great to see all your faces and uh, I guess we'll leave you with once a gorilla. Always a gorilla. Always a gorilla. <laughs> Have a great night. All right. Thank you. Right, thank you. Thank Thanks, you. everybody. Hey, everybody.